we're breaking a record in this episode of our time because our special guest is, I think, the oldest person that we've ever had on our time. No, not quite the oldest person, but the oldest person we've had in the studio. But he doesn't hold the record of being the first ventriloquist we've had in the studio because Lindy Jane was the first ventriloquist we had. But here is the man who is 94... Gordon you, Ross. Are you 94? Yes, I am 94, yeah. Yeah, well, how old are you? I, 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 I'm only a little child, I am. And how old are you, though? Uh, 75. Right. So you were born at some point in Gordon's life, would that be right? Yeah, well, uh, this is my wooden-headed friend. Yes. Uh, don't call me wooden-head. Why not? It goes against the grain. <laughs> I oh, get that. Get, get that. <laughs> I don't know where they come from. Well, from that little wooden head. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well. How um, amazing. Gordon, how did all this begin for you? I think probably because of uh, uh, watching films yeah. in the early times. Well, there was the famous American ventriloquist. Edgar Bergen. And yep. Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd, of course, yes. they were on radio for something like 30 years. But then when they came to movies, it wasn't quite the same when we actually saw them. No, <laughs> I'm afraid he, because of the radio where you don't have, you, you, you work deadpan on radio. Oh, well, no one can see you, of course. That's right. And you don't have to do lip control. How, uh, how did you start with lip control? Who taught you? A gentleman called, a brilliant ventriloquist called Cyril Talbot. He lived at Torrensville. Right. He did the Tivoli circuits. He was absolutely brilliant. And he actually this made my... This would have been my, in vaudeville, I assume. A vaudeville yeah. man. He made my first ventriloquist figure for me. And Amazing. he let me pay it off uh, so much when I had a little bit of money. And ah. he was brilliant. He was nice to me. How amazing. And uh, there's lots of, we are blessed with lots of ventriloquists, uh, Mal Verco and Ginger with radio, of course. Yes. Uh, Do you know what years that were? That was? It'd have to be some, oh, gee whiz, I'd look at my age, you got to, <laughs> you'd have to say that it was somewhere in the... 30s? Oh, I don't know, early... 35s or something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah, when radio like. was the great entertainer in your, in your lounge room at home? Well, it was. It was the only thing that you had back then was radio. And I was fortunate enough to do a little bit of it. Mm. But mainly I, I was interested in going on our new medium of television. TV. Uh, TV. I wanted were, to be you, a... were you on TV? Yeah, I was. I, I, was on, uh, I was a star, you know. And what, what shows were you on? Well, I started out, I'll do it if you don't mind. I started out on a show which is called The Birthday Show with Cliff, right. Cliff Neat. Right. And yes. Nolly the Gnome. Right. And it was a scripted show and the first show that I did I have no idea what I did none whatsoever <laughs> because of nerves nerves I had medium. no idea and I went home to my wife expecting the the worst and she said oh you got through that all right because she knew the script because <laughs> I've been rehearsing it of course you mean you rehearse do you rehearse no I, I, I was never in a hearse no no, uh, no 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 I think you misunderstood do you practice before you go on? Yes, I'm afraid that, uh, like most ventriloquists, and Linda will tell you, and Raymond, you practice in front of a mirror. Mm. And but usually you've did got Did you a... practice in front of a mirror? Yeah. yeah. Did you like looking at yourself? Well, you have to, to get your synchronisation. Yes, quite. And because you're not looking at the character. No, Everything's got to be... Synchronised to, to, to fortune, hopefully match up with the the doll's mouth. Yep. Uh, that that is the misdirection of ventriloquism. Well, is that why it comes under the the title of magic? 
It is, in say. some senses, yes. Uh, you find that most magicians in my area had a ventriloquist figure. So they did the double, like myself. I did magic ventriloquism. Right. Uh, because it always sort of went together, magicians and ventriloquists. I think, I think they did. it's just magic, really. Yeah. And throwing your voice, that was the big thing. There's no such thing. No, I know. But, uh, throw, throwing but it, your voice. It's the illusion, isn't it? It's the illusion. If you, people, It's people's minds, if I can explain it. It's people's minds. You have to sow the seed. If you want your voice to come from the ceiling, you have to sow that seed. So who's mucking around up in the ceiling there? It's me, Cyril, up here. And you do the distant voice, but firstly you've got to salt and pepper it, otherwise it's not going to work. The human mind picks that up. Oh, there's somebody up in the ceiling. Yes. They don't care who it is. So we're looking up immediately. Uh, yeah. But if you're doing that, if I wanted to talk to somebody uh, in the wings, and I say, hey, uh, Bill. Yeah, what do you want? It's no good at me looking at the floor. Quiet. Yep. Otherwise, it's nothing happens. Yep. And one yep. of the first ventriloquisms, strangely enough, were screens. The French used them extensively. Okay. And what it was, at the human mind again, what it was, it was say that's a screen, Mm -hmm. and it's up off the ground and it's got a pair of shoes underneath it. Right. Okay, so right. the mind immediately thinks there is a person Somebody under behind there. the screen. Yeah, and you can walk around, and as the French did in their carnival, and they could walk around that yard and they could talk to somebody behind that screen because the mind has already said, okay, there's somebody, if you put two pairs of shoes under these under there, you're right, or three, yeah. so you've got it. But take the shoes away so that they can, can't see anything under there, there's nothing there, and ventriloquism won't work. Do you know, it's interesting, I was in Egypt earlier this year, and there's actually pictures, if you like, of ventriloquists way back then yeah. and magicians you know turning staffs into snakes and all sorts of things and and uh, talking as if they're the gods the gods are talking the gods yes you i think i spoke to you about this mm. that, that they're in the cairo museum mm. there's a six foot statue that is so beautifully weighted that the ventriloquist stands alongside, or the priest in this case. Yes, exactly. It's the priest. Yeah. Uh, he stands alongside it, and all he's got to do is move the thumb, and the mouth will open. It's so beautifully weighted. And it's in the Cairo Museum. Yep, yep. And it's, uh, I've not seen it myself, only a photograph of it. I've seen it. Have you? Yes. Yes. Oh, gee, you're one up on me, then. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Much travelled. Well, much travelled. <laughs> much well, travelled. Right there. It's, so, uh, so finding, though, a doll to work with that you feel you have... Do you feel you've got, like, a, um, a connection with them? Well, I know a chap came... I make ventriloquist figures. I, yes, we'll I talk make about some that. for David Strassman and yep. a few of them. And Linda. Uh, yes. Uh, and... I've made them, but there's no good preempting. Whatever comes out of that mould and you make, and you, every time you'll cut the eyes different and you'll cut the mouth different, everything will be different on it. And it's yeah. no good saying, I'm going to put a voice with that before you can ha handle the doll, because it won't work. Find, right, you've got to find his personality. Yeah, got or to her find. personality. And then you've... The sock is one thing that we all use, and perhaps as children, a lot, a lot of people well, would have sewn yeah. a couple of buttons on a sock, yeah. and you've got the sock, and you practice in front of the mirror. You do not practice with him, because he's got a leather mouth, and a very fine mouth, and a lot of the ventriloquist figures of that period did have, right. and you wear it out. And then right. you bring it to somebody like me, <laughs> that Defensive. says you want the leather work done, which I've had them send out from Canada and everywhere. Right. 
and I charge you $800 or 900 to replace that leather. So you lose... You, so you don't sock. want to wear it out. Yeah, you I don't want it. to wear it out. So you use a sock. Right. So this is practising to make sure, you know, when that's talking, that it's talking the right way for you. That's right. Yep. You must synchronise. It's very interesting when you watch people doing that who don't understand what they're doing. Yeah. They just do this when they're talking. That's right. Rather than making the mouth work as you're talking. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's I exactly right, my friend. I think... Uh, 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 and Ashley... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Ashley, we've sort of not, not been talking to you for a yeah, while. I... But hang on, Ashley, don't say a word. No, no don't no, you... No, don't say a word because we've got to go to a break. But we'll be back in a moment. Our very special guest on this episode is Gordon Ross. Gordon, being a ventriloquist, you must have been asked the question a million times, is this real? I can answer that in a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It is real to a certain extent. Uh, one instance I can give you, I was working in Ringwood Square, and I always finished off my act by putting Ashley in the case. Right. So he's in there grizzling and groaning as yes. you walk off and you pick the case off and walk off and he's still groaning. And I put him in the case and a little lad, who must have been about eight, come marching up and said, you'll suffocate that boy <laughs> and I'm going to find a policeman. <laughs> and he kicked me fair in the shins ah. and marched off. Yep. And his father said to me after, he said, I don't blame him. I was sitting there watching you work, and as far as I'm concerned, you were talking to a little boy. So yep. I see why my son was fooled. So that was a great compliment to me, I well, thought. Well, it is. It that, absolutely that, uh, is. That I actually fooled somebody. Oh, I think you fooled more than somebody. Yeah. So, Ashley, how did you get your name? Well, uh, Ashley's name was... Just we went through a thousand names, I think, until Ashley seemed to be. You you, it, you got to be very careful when you're a ventriloquist because there's some letters you cannot say. Yes, which M? you've got A B's as one B, a very yeah. bad one, C D E. It, naturally enough, you avoid that one. Yes, uh, as hard as you can. Yes, and uh, so. A bottle of beer was one of the standard things that a people said, oh, I've got the gear, he's got mm. a got the gear. You can't say it, can you? What? A bottle of beer. You can't say it without kneading your lips, can you? Well, you no, were I moving can't your say lips. It. You were moving your lips. Yeah, I'll say you. You're not a very good ventriloquist, oh, you know. Uh, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Can't you? No. How much practice have you, by sitting on his lap, learnt to say these well, things? Well, I'm, I'm probably the star, as you can understand. Yes. And if you like, I'll give you a few lessons. Oh, OK. Give me a lesson. I'm ready. OK. Yeah, right. Say, I got the gear. I got the gear. I got the gear. Hang on. You... I might be moving my lips. I'll try and do it without. I got the gear. Yeah, your you false teeth are slipping there. Now, oh. now, that's it. Now, go on. A got the gear, go on. A got the gear. Uh, not bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll I want tell to say a bottle of beer. I'll, I'll, what I'll do for you, mm -hmm. uh, seeing I'm the expert on this. Yes, I like experts. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, you know, for a few dods, you know, stuck in, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm not the able to help you out. One of the big things, if I can mention it, was the oracle. I don't know if you have heard of the wise oracle. King Harold years, years oh, back right, right, right. wrote about him. Yes. The wise oracle. It was the biggest con, ventriloquist con of all times. <laughs> what happened was he's supposed to live down a well, so he's not very bright after all, <laughs> but he lived at the bottom of <laughs> yes. a well. Now, he had an attendant, so the attendant would be there, and it might be that... Uh, uh, Somebody passes a few passes a bit of silver into the hand. 
Right. Where do you ask the oracle, will my crops grow this year? Yes. Now, it's no good if using a voice that if you wanted to talk to Ted across the road or Bill across the road, I tell, what is it? On any cut of tea. You, you can't use that voice. No. It has to be ethereal because yes. it's supposed to be from... An oracle. An, an oracle. From so the well. What happens is you have to do it this way, and I usually demonstrate this on stage. Oh, will I... Young girl comes up. Will I be in baby this year? Send her either ear. <coughs> no. No, 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 you don't. Say. And what would happen is that, why do you disturb me? Why? And it has to be something like that. Yeah. And the Doing hollowness of the well, yes. the hollow well, it gives you all that back again and you can do a distant voice and it's perfect there. And one of the silly things I used to do down at, I was born at Henley and in the Henley Square, you might remember there used to be a big rotunda mm -hmm. and every Sunday night the band used to play there. I don't know what band it was and they used to have guest artists and I saw lots of ventriloquists come through there. Elmer Crocker, for one, mm -hmm. the, a lady ventriloquist who used to have a main character, a girl, boy and a girl, and on their laps were two little figures. And oh, she okay. used to wor work f so, the whole lot through right, pull so strings. Right. Mm. And I used to visit Elmer at her retirement village. Right. And she showed me, taught me distant voices. Right. Well, see, this is the thing, Gordon. If somebody, for some reason in humankind, every rare, every rare group of people seems to throw up somebody like yourself or Linda Jane, who's yeah, actually Linda, here in Linda, the studio Linda, tonight. Yeah, Linda was... Uh, well, I, when I was on... We both Chad, call her Linda because we've known her since she was a uh, child. Well, that's right. Well, she used to watch me on television and she was in a bubble because she had a heart condition mm. and she wasn't allowed to mix. And they gave her an old Spanish ventriloquist figure, which was her friend in there. And, right. of course, she practised away and she used to write to me and she's been a dear friend of the family's ever since, you know. Well, it's such a rare thing to find someone with the skill to do this. You know, it really is a unique thing. In, that's what I was saying, thrown up in humanity, this rare ability to be a vent. Uh, yes, it's, uh, I've, I've taught. I, I'm hopeful that somewhere along the line at one of the arts theatres or the hot good or somewhere, Mm. that I can run ventriloquist classes. Yes. Well, nobody's doing it. it, it you know, I haven't seen any young vents for a long time. No. Linda was the last one that I've seen. Well, unfortunately, in England, which was probably the home of a lot of ventriloquism, there's not even a club. Oh, really? And in America, where it was very, very strong, you had Paul Winchell's and yep. Charlie McCarthy and everything yep. there. Maya Studios, where you would send to buy your ventriloquist figure. Right. Closed, gone, finished. Yeah, so it is a dying it's art. It's a dying art, yeah. I guess we're waiting to see a new breed of people coming through in things like the fringes that are now like old vaudeville that right. literally tour the world. And to Gordon's, have a figure like this, actually Ron Blaskett. Yeah, well, we haven't okay. talked about Ron, but you, you actually made... So Ron, for people living in Victoria, they'll know Ron Blaskett very well because he had, what was his character's name? Uh, Jerry G. Jerry G yeah. and Ron. And you had the moulds. He, he actually licensed you to be able to make the moulds. Uh, of the Jerry G. Juniors mm -hmm. and the Geraldines, Ron was given the, the master moulds and I had new moulds taken off them. Yep. And we made 
the anniversary special with my wife and my daughter because mm -hmm. uh, they had to be dressed, all this sort of thing. Yep. And my workshops in One Turner South. And we're still at this stage, and I, I'd like to mention this if I can. This is a plug. So if it's not, not, not allowed to do it, no, you better tell me. No, you're allowed to do anything you like. Okay. We are hopeful with a friend of mine, Mark Ward, the amazing mill markets in Geelong and Dalesford mm -hmm. and Ballarat, the mm -hmm. three of them. Yep. He has allotted us a big room for us to set up a ventriloquist museum. Oh, brilliant. But we need the characters to be able to put in there. I've got quite a few right. that I've done. I've got a workshop. So it's that finding the people. We're going to come back in just a minute. Uh, we're going to tell you about a very special exhibition of ventriloquism and ventriloquist dolls coming up very soon. Back in a tick. And we're back with Gordon and Ashley. Gordon, there is something very special coming up for you, isn't there? It's a, a special exhibition. It is, and I, th I think it's, uh, I know that it's at the Hilton RSL. Yep. And hopefully lots of people will turn up because it's going to be demonstrations of lots of ventriloquists. Yep. Hopefully David Strasso will be there. Good yeah, well, talking of David Strassman, how did you know David? Uh, he, he, I got in touch with him in Melbourne uh, through Bernard's Magic Shop. Mm hmm and he wanted me to go and have a look at the show. Look at you here, there's a photo here of you and David. Oh yeah, good old Dave. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, he's the old one, this side here. Oh no, yes, with the white that's hair. Yeah, 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 the yeah. one who's actually got hair. Yeah, yeah that, that, well, that, that's just his hair. I don't like him. Why not? <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. And David was over here for the exhibition, for the last year for the Fringe, right. the, the year before, and he rang me and said, can you come in? And I had a bit of health problem at the stage, and I said, well, I don't think I can drive in. And he sent an Uber car out for me, ah. along with my son-in-law, which you've met, yep. and picked me up and took me into the Teddy Bears chocolate tour. <laughs> And uh, we spent a good time together and... Uh, he's unique as you are. Oh, he's a, he's a gentleman. Uh, as you are. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice. Uh, doesn't know you very well, does he? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I think you've had a huge influence on so many people over the years, Gordon. Oh, uh, well, perhaps. And really on their behalf, it's to say thank you for a life well lived and so much performance and entertainment that you've contributed to the world. It's just wonderful. I would like to mention one thing, mm. that I was at one stage on Channel 7 on the Young Talent Show. Mm -hmm. And during that period, we did lots of pantomimes. Mm -hmm. And my time in Melbourne was spent mainly doing commercials with our right. different characters and I have a range of characters which is about eight or I know, nine and or ten. you're still making them aren't you? Yeah and this is, he's the only one that's actually been in a commercial. He made the you, brother a, commercial. A which was, Yeah he made the brother commercial and I turned Ernie Segley who you know Ernie. Yep. Uh, got in touch with me when we moved to Melbourne and said, oh, we need some special extras for our films. What about coming in? So I joined the agency that Ernie was connected to. And I think about four occasions we ended up on uh, the set together as magistrates, sitting as judges, <laughs> and, you know. I and one it. I did chop a reed and I had that big you know, the, that big wig that they have on? Yeah. And I had to wear that and it was, oh, it was about 130 in the shade, I think. <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to touch it because it was worth four or five thousand dollars. Oh, as a lot of those things and are. I'm, and we did it in the Port Adelaide Town Hall, uh, courtrooms, I should say. 
and a young girl come up to me and said, excuse me, sir, do I see you regarding my something she wanted? And I said, no, see my clerk of the court, will you just over there? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Gordon, thank you so much. It's been just lovely talking with you. Well, it has been my pleasure. and uh, For all I, of us. I've heard so much about you. Um, Gordon, thank you so much for being part of our time this time. It's just been lovely to meet you both. Thank so until you. next time on our time, keep yourselves nice. Till then, bye. Bye.